Uh, good afternoon everyone. I am Dr. Aishwarya and I am a oral pathologist. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri from Oral Medicine and Radiology. Ashreya, I am going to fire with rapid questions. Okay. Okay. You are going to start or let me start? I will ask your question okay. first. Okay. So, um, this is a very common question and a scenario that we see every day in our dental clinic. Okay. So, imagine if you had a female patient okay. who comes with you who has, um, how should I put it, her eyes, her sclera are whitish okay. and her tongue is uh, very white okay. and depapulated and uh, she said that she had uh, anemia in the past. Okay. So, what would be the first syndrome that you could think of? Okay, we can think of uh, plum about plumber Vincent syndrome. Okay, so this plumber Vincent syndrome can be called as like Patterson Kelly syndrome or uh, syndrome dysphagia also. Okay. So you have told about uh, iron deficiency anemia, right? Yes. So the main component of the syndrome will be iron deficiency anemia. Okay, along with this iron deficiency anemia, you can see the dysphagia also. This dysphagia is because of esophageal valves. Okay. And one more important point is about the chiron. Yes. So now I understand so that the patient was asking uh, difficulty in eating and yeah. swallowing. Because so in those kind of patients, we need to go for a barium swallow okay. to detect the esophageal valves. Okay. Okay. Now I am going to give a clinical scenario. Okay. okay. So a male patient, okay. he came to my clinic. Okay. So he had a diagnosis with uh, uh, fibrous dysplasia earlier. Okay. And uh, he also has a brown color type of macules in face and the trunk. Okay. I mean like, can you name the syndrome? I have another question. So, okay. how is the growth part of the child? That uh, the patient has a retarded growth. So, I think uh, I would, my diagnosis would mostly be towards uh, McEwen Albright syndrome. Okay. Because if you would have told me that the development of milestone of the child was normal, I would prefer choosing uh, Jaffe syndrome. But okay. since uh, you said so that, so can you clear? I mean, like, can you tell, tell clearly about the Jaffe syndrome and so McEwen Albright syndrome? So the main difference between uh, Jaffe syndrome and McEwen Albright syndrome is Jaffe syndrome does not have uh, this any sort of endocrine disturbances. Hence, okay. the growth de development or precocious puberty okay. is not uh, seen in this. Whereas okay. in case of McEwen Albright, apart from having uh, the most common bone involvement would be fibrous dysplasia. Mm -hmm. And you also see uh, this uh, endocrine disturb disturbance. So, the main culprit is endocrine yeah. disturbance. Those were nothing but cafe oily spots where you see the brownish discoloration. So, okay. these are the three features that you see. In One is cafe. In McEwen Albright syndrome. Albright syndrome. One is okay. your cafe oily spots or brownish discoloration. The second thing being your endocrine disturbances. And the third being your fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia. Okay. So, now I have a very interesting question for you. Okay. Now, suppose if you have a diabetic patient who comes to you uh, for a checkup, mm. and uh, this patient, what would be the first thing that would bounce off your head thinking there's a syndrome associated with the hyper with, with the diabetes. diabetes? The diabetes. patient is having hypertension also. Yes. Okay. So I think this patient might complain with the burning sensation also. Because the most common syndrome are, uh, associated with this uh, diabetes and hypertension along with oral lichen planus is your Brinsman syndrome. Okay, so ask your patient whether he had uh, burning sensation in the mouth and also ask about the stress of the patient. So you okay. can rule out this Grinspan syndrome. Okay, okay now I will give you syndrome actually, hmm. that is triad syndrome. I okay. will give two important components. You have to fill the third component along okay. with you have to name the same okay. components. Okay. okay, and uh, the patient has the first component of the syndrome is a double lip. Okay, and the second important component is a non uh, toxic thyroid enlargement. Okay, so what is the third component of the triad? And so have this, to is, this, uh, this is like a very common thing for us in which we teach us in pathology that is Asher syndrome. Yeah, so there's a lot. Uh, so the third component is uh, blepharochaliasis. Okay, so three what is meant by that? Can so, you explain? So basically, um, Blaparochaliasis is nothing but the drooping of the lid, the mm -hmm. lower lid, um, the skin folds underneath it and um, along with the other two things that you see, the components is double lip which is continuously present and okay. apart from that you have, have the third thing that is your non-toxic uh, thyroid, thyroid enlargement. It is nothing but the enlargement of the thyroid gland without impairing the functionality. Hope you guys like this session and I had a very entertaining uh, colleague of mine who actually asked such question which uh, make you think so let's continue this and you will be seeing a lot more of us soon